Hey everyone, Lee Arkinall here from Cyborg Security with a new Threat Hunt Deep Dive video. In case you missed the previous episodes by Austin Jackson, the links can be found in the description below. For all of you viewers that are returning to us, thank you for your continued support. And for those of you who are new to this channel, I hope you like what you see, I hope you learn a lot, and I hope you keep coming back. Remember, your feedback is always important to us, so please let us know what you think. Alright, let's get started. Hey everyone, today we'll be talking about RDP session hijacking with tscon.exe, a Windows native binary. RDP session hijacking is the event that a legitimate user or an adversary takes control of an RDP session. I've added a legitimate user to the list because there's always a possibility for insider threat and privilege abuse. Because tscon.exe is a Windows native binary, the abuse of this can be categorized as a living off the land technique. For those of you unfamiliar with the term, living off the land relates to when an adversary compromises a machine and uses the tools that already exist to their advantage. Other common techniques include powershell.exe and command.exe. tscon.exe allows us to connect to and control inactive sessions on a device. By successfully doing so, we inherit the privileges of the account in that session. Because it was created by Microsoft as a legitimate tool, it has security controls in place to prevent its abuse. Importantly, the slash password parameter prevents unauthorized account access. This is an example of using tscon in a command to take control of an inactive session. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but I want to familiarize you with it when we use it in the demo. So how do we plan on exploiting tscon.exe? There's a vulnerability where if a legitimate user or an adversary has gained system level privileges using psexec or other means, it will bypass the need for a password, meaning they can connect to any inactive session they can find. What this also means is if they laterally move through the network and find an inactive session of a domain admin, they will get the keys to the kingdom. I'm about to show you that in this demo, so let's get to it. Before we jump in the lab and start having fun with tscon.exe, I want to mention that we're going to exploit it in two ways. In the first scenario, we're going to use remote desktop to laterally move to another machine. Once on the remote machine, we're going to identify sessions, run some enumeration commands, and then we're ultimately going to gain control of an inactive session. In the second scenario, we're going to remove the lateral movement steps from the process, but still gain control of an inactive session. If we look at Microsoft's documentation about tscon, there's two remarks. The first is that this command will fail if you do not specify a password in the slash password parameter. I'm going to show you how we can bypass that using tools out there on the internet. The second remark is you can't connect to the console session. We're also going to try and prove that wrong. All right, let's get to the lab. We've accomplished the first step of the process by connecting to a remote machine. The next step is to identify which usernames have current sessions on this device, and that can be done by issuing the command clear user. According to the output, three usernames have current sessions on this device, but only one is active. Looking at Richard D. Clark, you see there's a caret on the left hand side, a session name is assigned to it, and the state is active. Session name and session ID are important and will come into play later. But for now, let's run some commands to enumerate the privileges that the other usernames have. The next command that we are going to issue will tell us a little bit more about the privileges that William O. Darby has. That command can be seen on screen, which is net user username slash domain. According to the output, his global group is a domain user, so he will not be our target for he doesn't have the privileges that we want. Knowing that William O. Darby is a domain user, we can rule him out as a target. We're going to use the same command to check the privileges of the other username with the session on this box, Leroy A. Petrie. Looking at the output of the command and looking at the global group memberships, we identify that he is a domain admin. So that's what we were looking for, and now we found our target. Here we have our tscon command crafted out. You notice that we're using our session name as the destination and we're targeting Leroy Petrie's session ID. But before we do this, remember there is one thing that Microsoft mentioned. If we do not specify a password in the slash password parameter, we should not get control of that session. 
So let's test that out. And there's the error. The username or password is incorrect. So how do we bypass this? That's where PSExec comes into play. Now let's see PSExec in action. We ran a quick who am I to validate that we are Richard D. Clark. Using the following command with attack as parameter, watch as PSExec provides us with system level authority. PSExec works as magic. We run another who am I to see if anything changed. And now we are system, so we've gained the authority that we needed. All right, with system level authority in hand, let's return to our tscon command and see if we can exploit this bypass. All right, error again. Let's consult the notes of Alexander Kariznikov. So here he states that we should create a service with the bin path and then our tscon command implanted in it. Let's see if this works. We have our command prepped and we're about to create a service named RDP hijack with the binary path consisting of our tscon command. The service has successfully been created. Now all that's left to do is start it. Now I want to warn you, the transition is quick. So don't blink or look away or you'll miss it. Our screen went black real quick, and now we have a blank desktop. But what really happened? Let's open up a PowerShell command to find out. It says we're Leroy A. Petrie, but to confirm, let's run a quick who am I. We are indeed Leroy Petrie. We are indeed Leroy Petrie with domain admin privileges. That means we have successfully taken control of an inactive session without a password and now have keys to the kingdom. So let's do a quick recap of what happened in scenario one. We used remote desktop to laterally move to another device. Once on the remote machine, we ran a query user to enumerate usernames, session names, and session IDs. We ran the list of usernames against a net user command to enumerate privileges. It was identified that Leroy Petrie was a domain admin who had an inactive session on that device. We then used PSExec to gain system level authority. And with this authority in hand, we created a service named RDP hijack that contained this tscon command in the binary path without a password. Once we started that service, our screen went blank and we got an empty desktop. And when we did a quick who am I, we found that we indeed took over Leroy Petrie's inactive session. We now had keys to the kingdom as a domain admin. If you recall, scenario two is going to have the same intentions using the same technique, but instead of with the lateral movement steps, we will be on a local machine. Now remember, we looked at the Microsoft documentation of TSCON, and it said you can't connect to the console session. Now that we're on a local machine, we're gonna run the query user command to compare the output to when we were on a remote machine. As you can see, it's very similar output, but the main difference is the session name. On a local machine, the session name is console. When we're on a remote machine, the session name consists of the RDP TCP syntax. Now that we have all the information that we need, we're gonna use the same process that we did in scenario one to take control of Leroy Petrie's inactive session. We've used PSExec to gain system level authority. We've used that authority to create a service called console hijack and our tscon command can be seen in the binary path. So the service has successfully been completed, and let's start the service. Sweet, we got the same results as last time. So let's open up PowerShell real quick, just to validate we are who we say we are. So it looks like we got the same results as in scenario one. Our screen went black, and we have a blank desktop. Let's open up PowerShell just to validate we are who we say we are. Also, we took control of Leroy Petrie's inactive session on a local machine using the destination as console, which is something that Microsoft says we shouldn't be able to do, but we did it. So now that we had fun exploiting this, let's head to Splunk.
Now that we know how to exploit tscon.exe, I want to show you three different techniques on how to detect it. In the first technique, we'll be looking at process create logs. In the second technique, we'll be looking at a specific event ID that is created when a service is created. In the third technique, we'll be looking at registry modifications, which happens whenever a service is created. Here we are with the first technique focused on process create. We'll be looking at Windows Event ID 4688 and Microsoft Sysmon Event ID 1. A quick note to mention is that Sysmon Event ID has a native function that captures the command line arguments. Windows Event ID 4688 has the option, but it's normally turned off by default. What this means is that you'll still gain information surrounding the process being created, but you'll lose the context of the command line arguments. This means that detection might be a little harder and may take more investigative steps. Looking at the results of the search, and specifically the command line arguments, we can see that we capture both the local and remote session hijack. Sysmon event ID 1 takes it another step further and tells us that the user that created this process was system. Knowing what we know about the exploit and seeing the lack of the slash password parameter in the command line arguments, we can safely assume that this was a successful exploit. On to technique two. Here we'll be focusing on Windows Event ID 7045, a new service has been installed in the system. Looking at the search criteria, we're looking for a field that contains TSCON, end destination, and RDP tech TCP or console. Now in this logs case, that field name is service file name, which I've renamed to bin path. I did this to better relate it to the command you saw me execute in the lab. Looking at the output, we once again have captured the tscon command, as well as the service name, the outcome, and the service start type. Looking at the bin path, you once again see the lack of a slash password parameter. In the service name, you know that's what we named them, so we captured that. Outcome, it was successful, so we know it was a successful exploit, and the service start type. What demand start says is that this service has to be manually started, which, once again, thinking about what I did in the lab, I manually started it. What this means is that if no one catches that a new service was created, and no one looks at the bin path to identify that it's a tscon command, then the only person with the knowledge of this is the adversary. If the adversary still has access to that compromised machine, that means he can run this service anytime and possibly gain control of more inactive sessions. All right, everyone, a big thank you for sitting through my first video for Cyborg Security. I had a lot of fun showing you how to exploit tscon.exe as well as detect it in an environment using a sim. But before you leave, make sure you grab the references, the links, and the search queries listed in the description below. Also, if you like what you saw, please leave your feedback, give us a like, and maybe hit that subscribe button. Well, until the next time, everyone stay safe and take care. See ya.